Okay, now that we have learned some basic uh, concept of the sine, the cosine, and the tangent, now let's look at some applications uh, of those um, trigonometric functions. Now, let's say we have a force that acts in a certain direction. Let's say the direction is 30 degrees above the horizontal. And we're supposed to find the x and the y components of, those, of that force. Now, you may not know anything about physics. It's an application of physics. That's okay. What it really comes down to is that we have a hypotenuse, and we're going to need to find the opposite and adjacent sides of the angle associated. With other words, we can take this and move it over here. I'll do it in a dashed line like that. And so now you can see we have a triangle, just like here. We have an opposite side to the angle, we have an adjacent side to the angle, and we have an hypotenuse. Now in our case, the hypotenuse has units of 40 newtons. We just put down the number 40. We don't care about the units, newtons. And so now we're trying to find what y is equal to and what x is equal to. And by definition, we know that the sine of the angle theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. In this case, the opposite side is y, so that's equal to y over h. And the cosine of the angle theta, cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side, adjacent side divided by hypotenuse, that would be x over h. Okay, now that we have that, if we now want to solve this for y, we can then look at this and say, okay, that means that y is equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of theta and x can be found by saying that's equal to uh, h times the cosine of theta. And in the very same way, we're going to find the, what we call the f sub y and the f sub x, because that's the opposite and that's the adjacent side to this particular triangle. So over here, we can see that to find h, this is equal to the hypotenuse 40 times the sine of 30 degrees. Now it turns out that I don't need my calculator for a sine of 30 degrees because that's exactly equal to 1 half. So this is equal to 40 times 1 half or 20. So in the very same way over here we can say that the x component of the force is equal to the force F times the sine of the, oh, I don't want the x component, I want the y component because I was looking for the opposite side, y. So the y component of the force is equal to f times the sine of theta. So in this case, that would be equal to 40 newtons times the sine of 30 degrees. And we found that that's exactly equal to 1 half. So that's 40 newtons times 1 half, which is equal to 20 newtons. So now we know that the y component of the force is 20 newtons, just like right over here, we found that the y component of this triangle, the opposite side of the triangle, was equal to 20. Now we'll do the same for the x component. So x equals h cosine theta, that would be 40 times the cosine of 30 degrees. Now the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2, so this is equal to 40 times the square root of 3 over 2. And again, by now I've done this so many times, I have memorized what it is equal to, so that's 40 times 0 0.866. And then, I'll grab my calculator now. Then if we multiply, so we have a 0 0.866 times 40 is equal to 34.6, 34.6. So in the very same way, we can find the x component of the force, which is equal to f times the cosine of theta. In this case, the force was 40 newtons. And the cosine of theta, that would be the cosine of 30 degrees. So this would be 40 newtons times 0 0.866. And so just like before, that would be 34.6 newtons. And that's F sub X. And so that's how we find the X and the Y components of the force. And you can see how that follows the general principle of using the sine and the cosine.